Welcome, I'm Michelle Anderson, the founder of Clarinet Mentors. Today I want to talk to you about the E-flat clarinet. Some things to consider if you're curious about playing it or if you're just interested in learning more about the instrument, here it is. You can see I have it with my B-flat clarinet here. You can see the difference in size. The E-flat is much smaller, but really fun to play. It's often an instrument that people get asked to play if they're already in a group where they're playing their regular B-flat clarinet. And at first, it can feel really tricky to play. So I want to share with you some things that I think can make it easier and hopefully will help you get started if you're interested in playing the E-flat clarinet. Now, because it's smaller, it's kind of like the piccolo is in the flute family, it plays much higher range. The fingerings are identical to the clarinets that we're used to. So it's not that hard to pick one up and start reading music. What is sometimes challenging is to have it feel comfortable in your mouth and also to get a good sound out of it. So before I dive into specifics on what we can do physically with our embouchure and our mouth and such, I want to talk about equipment because there are some equipment things that make a big difference on the E-flat clarinet. First of all, I want to talk about reeds. And I know there are lots of opinions about reeds and such on the, on the clarinet, but here's what I'll say. This is true for me and virtually all of my favorite professional colleagues who play E-flat clarinet, although people have different opinions on it, I much prefer using B-flat reeds on my E-flat clarinet than the ones that are designed for E-flat clarinet. In general, I find the cane is better quality and we just produce a bigger sound. And there's kind of two ways that you can do that. What I have is a special barrel and I'm going to hold one up close so you can see that. This particular barrel is for one thing, made out of tulip wood, and it's a beautiful color. But what makes it unique is the back side of this barrel. I'm going to let you see it from an angle here. There's a little cutaway here that is flatter, and that allows, when it's on my instrument, you can see how this is cut away here, it allows me to have a reed that comes down below the top of the barrel, which I couldn't do in a normal barrel. This allows me to take a B-flat reed and put it on in its entirety on the clarinet, which is a lovely feature. Certainly more convenient because I already have lots of B-flat reeds in my life and I just have to find one that I like. Now before I had that barrel though, um, what I did is I took my B-flat reeds, I'm going to hold two in my hand here, and I cut off the bottom. So you can see here's two of the same type of reed for B-flat clarinet and I've shortened one to accommodate, if I'm playing on a regular E-flat clarinet barrel, this will fit. And the way that I would do that is I would, I put it on my mouthpiece, I held it up, and I made it as long as I could to still fit. So I would just take a pen, and I did a line on the back of the reed, kind of to where it needed to cut it so it would still fit. And there are different ways you can do this. For me, it was convenient. I just had some wire cutters from the hardware store, and I just simply snipped it and off it went. Now, I did have someone who was an expert saying you're pinching the cane and every now and then you'll split the reed and probably about once out of 50 times it would cause the reed to break very rarely and if it pinched the cane in the bottom there I didn't discern any noticeable difference and um, what this person did is put it in a vise and, and use a hacksaw to saw it through. That works too for me I just like to go plunk, snip, done. So that's what I would recommend. You certainly can try the E-flat reeds that are out there, but I found cutting my B-flat reeds to E-flat size work. Now, they are slightly wider at the tip, and it is quite likely that different mouthpieces will respond differently to this technique. For me, on my mouthpiece, the B-flat reeds sound richer and warmer than the E-flat reeds do, so that's what's always worked for me. In fact, that's been true on a variety of different mouthpieces. So, Speaking of mouthpieces, um, like all clarinets, I always recommend we try and invest in a good quality mouthpiece because it can make intonation and response, how easy it is to play, so much better for you. So if you have the chance to get a better mouthpiece, that may make it much easier for you as you're trying to navigate the treacheries of the E-flat clarinet. There are many good ones out there. Yeah. I've used Van Doren mouthpieces. I've used Greg Smith mouthpieces. I'm currently using a Bakun mouthpiece, which I really like. It produces a beautiful sound with the instrument I have now. And again, like I always say with mouthpieces, if you have a chance to go in and try them out, that's ideal because they respond differently to everyone. So although the ones I've just listed are companies that make good E-flat mouthpieces, 
There are lots of other good ones out there, and what's most important is you pick one that fits your face really well. I definitely recommend you experiment with cutting down the B-flat reeds to size, or if you can get a cutaway barrel, even better. I think it's a really nice option. Now, I'll also say one thing I've been experimenting with with reeds um, is using the synthetic reeds. Oftentimes, if I'm playing E-flat clarinet, it's rare that I'm doing an entire concert or show only on my E-flat clarinet. I often will have a stand in front of me with my A clarinet, my B-flat clarinet, and the E-flat clarinet, and I'm playing all of them. And if it's an opera or something, sometimes it's a quick switch between the two clarinets. And a B-flat reed, a cane reed, sometimes any cane reed can get fussy if it's sitting unused for a long time. But sometimes there's situations where I have to pick it up quickly and have it play right away. So in those cases, I've actually been experimenting with the Legere European cut. And because I have the cutaway barrel, I can just put um, a B-flat reed on there. At the time that I'm recording this video, I don't believe the European cut is made for E-flat clarinet yet. So I, haven't exper I have not experimented with trying to cut one of these down to size, but um, I'll just play one for you. And you'll see that because I think the plastic reeds have a little bit of a brighter sound, that actually can work very well with the E-flat clarinet because uh, when people are writing for the E-flat clarinet, oftentimes the personality of it is kind of very bright and sparkly and sometimes it's the comedian of the orchestra or the band. And having that slightly brighter sound is not necessarily a bad thing. Again, totally depends on your mouthpiece, your clarinet, your setup, but I find that they can work quite well. So it's pretty consistent sound. If I go back to my cane reed, what I'd probably notice is that when my cane reed is working well, I might slightly prefer the sound, but sometimes I don't want to take that chance that it might not be working well. So I think it's a little bit warmer sound, but I will say that's something to definitely consider experimenting with, especially if you're in a situation where you're going back and forth between a couple different clarinets and you just want to make sure when you pick it up that the reed hasn't dried out or warped or something that can happen with cane reeds. So that covers some of the gear. And of course there are different ligatures as well that can make a difference on how your E-flat plays, but getting the reed and the mouthpiece sorted out I think is a big part of what can make the instrument feel better. Now again, if you're playing at a higher level, there are of course things like special wooden barrels, this is a bakun barrel, that can also improve tone and sound, but for most of you, you might just be picking it up in your school band or you've picked one up yourself and you're just trying to get some basic handle on what works, then I'll say definitely, as I said, experiment with the B-flat reeds and the mouthpiece and perhaps the Legera reeds. The other gear is just a bonus on top of that. Now, how does E-flat clarinet differ from the B-flat clarinet? Well, as I said, the fingerings are the same, so that's nice. However, the holes are much smaller and closer together. If you're someone with really large hands, sometimes this is a challenge. I know some people who are great clarinetists who just don't like playing the E-flat because they find their fingers get tangled up. So that may be a factor. Having said that, I've seen people with very large hands play E-flat really well. So it's kind of up to you and what feels good. I think, though, it's more the personality of the E-flat that we need to think about. Depending what kind of group you're playing on, whether it's an orchestra or a band, they sometimes have slightly different roles. In the orchestra, if it's a solo, it's often kind of either a loud, shrill solo or um, a really comedic one. And so that allows us to play with kind of a brighter sound than we would normally play on our B-flat clarinet. So when we're getting into that character, I find the voicings a little bit different from B-flat clarinet. And what I mean by voicing is my tongue position. So I tend to play mostly classical music, which means when I have my B-flat clarinet, I'm trying to have my tongue very high in my mouth. And this is what it would look like if we had an x-ray. It's arched and high as if I'm saying the letter he. And that's usually what I'll do in the E-flat clarinet. But sometimes we can have our tongue a little bit lower to give it a brighter sound. Let me demonstrate that for you. I'll just play a simple scale, first of all with my tongue in classical clarinet position, he, and then I'm going to lower it just a little bit, and it'll make it a little bit more brighter, a little bit more 
bratty sounding, which is sometimes what we want for the E flat clarinet. So here's the more classical voicing. Now I'm going to lower it just a bit. Now that affected my pitch, which is a different issue that we'll get to in a minute. But it, you can see it gave the timbre a bit of a brighter, bigger sound. And so that's something I experiment with on E flat clarinet is playing with the timbre, which means the quality of sound. You know, our voice does it really well. I can go ooh, ah, e, all in the same pitch, but really different types of sound. We can kind of experiment on that with our clarinets, and the E flat is really fun to do that with. What I will say is most E flat clarinets do not play in tune very easily. It, there's something about shortening the instrument that especially when we get into the higher notes like our altissimo range, they do not naturally play in tune very well. So one of our biggest challenges as an E flat clarinetist is just figuring out how to play it in tune. And for the most part, when I'm going up to the high C thumb and register key, I'm using the fingerings that I would find on any standard clarinet chart. However, you'll notice when I drop my tongue, my high C was flat. That may be the case on your clarinet. If it's flat, then we need to invent our own fingerings for E flat clarinet. For the altissimo range, I'm always experimenting. And so what I like to do when I am first getting back into E flat, if I haven't played it or if I have a different instrument than the one I'm accustomed to, is I'll sit down with the tuner and figure out what I need to do with my fingerings to make them play in tune. So I'll give you some suggestions. If we have a note that's playing a little bit flat, we need to find a way to add some, to open some other keys, push down some keys that open holes that will bring the pitch up a bit. So what would be an example of that? Let's say I'm trying to play my altissimo F with this is our standard fingering and it plays a bit flat, which they often do. A great finger to add is this fourth key here. Or more drastically, sometimes we can add our side keys. Now, that might make it way too sharp, but you just need to experiment. What could I add? So you can hear it brings the pitch up just a little bit, and that would be a matter of me sitting with the tuner and figuring out, well, what is going to sound best there? Sometimes a note's sharp, and we might have to cover holes. So if that note had been sharp, then I'd be looking at, well, maybe I could sort of half hole that top hole, or the more I cover it, the lower the pitch goes. Let me demonstrate that. So you can see as I slid my finger more covering that hole, the pitch went down. So these are the kind of things we can experiment with to play with pitch on this lovely little squeaky instrument as we get to know it. Another technique that's really useful to experiment with on the E-flat clarinet is playing with overtones. And what I mean by that is, or maybe we would call it overblowing a note. Taking a fingering that we often associate with the low register, but playing it so that we get an altissimal note. And we do this all the time when we squeak. We're actually hitting a real note. It's just higher than we intend. When we're trying to get an overtone, it's pretty easy to do an E-flat clarinet, but usually our jaw is pushing down a little bit more into the heart of the reed. So here would be an example. If I'm playing up an ex a scale, I can use the regular altissimo notes that I use on my B-flat clarinet, but usually they don't want to play in tune very well. So that D to E it worked, that E wanted to be flat. So already I'm trying to think, what fingering could I add to sort of make that sound better? So here's a fingering I can consider for that combination. As I work my way up the scale, I get to my C, thumb and register key. To go to the D, I'm just gonna roll my thumb up so that I'm no longer covering the thumb hole. I'm just hitting the register key. That's another way to play altissimo D. To get to the E, I'm going to add the A key in the front. Now, if we just looked at this on a fingering chart, I'm playing the register key, the A key. That's a throat tone B flat. But when I put it in context and I'm already up in the high register, it's pretty easy to turn that into an altissimo E. Now, again, still a little temperamental, but it sure speaks easily. I like the response. Let me turn sideways so you get a chance to see how my fingers were doing that. Now that one wimped out on me a bit, but 
it's it's an alternative to experiment with and to try and there are countless various fingerings we can use when they're up there in the altissimo register so it's a fun instrument to play it has tremendous personality and usually if you're playing it within your band or your orchestra you have some really fun pieces of music some of the time we're required to sound more like a clarinetist we're playing with the other clarinets and we want to blend in and that's why we want the ability to to be able to do that and I find playing on B flat reeds functionally can help us to get that darker sound it's fairly easy to brighten up just by changing our voicing but also again different types of wood will give us different qualities so if you have a variety of gear you can put on different types of barrels to match the personality of the particular piece that you're working on but I hope that gives you some ideas on things to do if you're thinking about switching to the E5 clarinet or adding it to your repertoire of clarinets that you're comfortable playing. It is a lot of fun to play. It definitely takes a little getting used to and, and as I said I just want to stress having the reeds and mouthpiece feel good can really make it easier to play. But I hope you enjoy it and I'd love to hear from you your experiences or your questions. There's a comments box below this video so please write your comments down below and I have an invitation for you. If you're not already a member of my clarinet mentors community please become one. It's totally free to join. Just go to www.learnclarinetnow.com, put in your name and email address. I create various educational videos about the clarinet that I send out about once a month in a newsletter. And along with the videos, I'll include my favorite gear tips, maybe some cool new reeds or ligatures or barrels or mouthpieces or music or recordings or events that I found out about that I think might interest you. And I'd love for you to be a part of that. Sometimes I'll invite you to join me for live online clarinet master classes, which is a great chance for you to ask me your clarinet questions and to meet clarinetists from literally all over the world. So join if you like, www.learnclarinetnow.com. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you're having fun with your own clarinet and I hope you experiment with this E flat. Look forward to seeing you on the next video.